Hello, you amazing viewers and subscribers, and a happy new year. Yes, it's finally 2020, and of course, to start off this amazing new year, we come to an anniversary year for a Doctor Who season. Yes, it is the 50th anniversary of the season 9 of Doctor Who. Now, this season 9 isn't the Peter Capaldi one, so get that one out your head. No, it is season 9's 50th anniversary, which is... John Pertwee's second, well, third full-on season as the third Doctor. We have Katie Manigan as Joe Grant's second season. And also we have five great stories. They're being broadcast from the 1st of January down to the 28th, 24th of Ju June, 1972. So a big, happy 50th anniversary to Doctor Who season 9. So in this season, we have the return of the Daleks after five years. We have the return of the Ice Warriors after three years being off screen. And it's the return of the Master who was last seen in the previous year in Season 8, which we have got in Doctor Who the Collection Range Season 8. So, there have been a load of rumours about Doctor Who the Collection Season 9 coming out at um, some point this year. Now, if it is going to come out this year, Season 9, I would absolutely love that for it to come out for its 50th anniversary like for the anniversary they did for Roger Degardo, because Roger Degardo's full on season as the master is on Blu ray right now and it was released last year. So I'd actually like to see them try and do the same for season nine. So I'm going to celebrate season nine by doing this whole big video of the happy anniversary to it. So I'm going to do, talk about each of these stories, what I personally think about them. Are they great? Are they good? Are they bad? Well,. <laughs> Let's dive in to what I think of Doctor Who Season 9. So, coming into Season 9, we have the very first story, which was broadcast from the 1st of January to the 22nd of January, 1972. So, yeah, this whole month is the anniversary of this story. And it is Day of the Daleks. So, I have a very kind of mixed bags um, of feelings for this story. Because if you watch the original version of it, it is not as great as it could have been but then when you watch it for the special edition that we have on the dvd it's a lot better it's got some new cgi effects the daleks sound amazingly better so yeah so let's talk about doctor who day of the daleks yes day of the daleks let's talk about this story so this story as it features the return of the daleks since 1967 in Evil the Daleks, they have basically have a big five year rest. So, Day of the Daleks, how can I say is this a good story? Uh, not really. Well, it depends which version you watch it. You watch a special edition version of it, it's good. If you watch the original transmitted version, it's pants. So, set in the 32nd century, you've got the Daleks that took over Earth and they have a big communicate like this kind of big massive tower thing where the Daleks are working and the way you see them like talking to each other saying who is ever operating the time machine is an enemy of the Daleks so also we see the return of the Daleks we have them in a brand new colour screen um colour like investments of it so we have the kind of like the kind of grey metallic Daleks, which we have got on figure right now. So here's the figure. After all the other Daleks just fell off and everything else. So this is the actual Daleks that we see in this story. So I'm going to pop that Dalek there. Can I move that bit back so I can try and fit it in? There we go. So we have the return of the metallic Daleks. And then also we have... The fantastic, amazing High Council Dalek, the Dalek si um, Supreme. This is the Dalek Supreme, as you can tell by the colouring with the black and gold. Now, this story also features Ogrons. Yes, the, this is the very first story to feature the Ogrons that appear in the season after for John Pertwee when they're working with the Master and stuff. So I'm going to pop the two Daleks like there so you can actually see me talking. I absolutely do enjoy this story because it's full of time travel. You've got the kind of um, gorillas that want to go back in time, try and change history, stop um, stop something happening. I uh, can't remember. It, it's been a while since I watched it, but I know some stuff about it. If you read the Target novel book of the story, it's a lot better than what's actually been, been, been perceived on screen. 
I'm sorry, but I just absolutely love these Daleks. I think they're absolutely great and magnificent. So, yeah, Day of the Daleks, Daleks go there. Um, also, what was I say? I absolutely love the fact when they actually capture the Doctor and then when they realise that he could change his ability. This is the very first time they actually capture the Doctor and I think this is the first time they actually show it on screen, his previous two incarnations, when they connect them up to the mind screen and you see like images of Patrick Troughton's Doctor and then, of course, William Hartnell and the Daleks go, This is an enemy of the Daleks. It must be exterminated. Exterminated. And you've got John Pertwee just stin like stuck on this table. Again, this is the only story that we see Unit take on the Daleks as well, which is a kind of another good thing because I absolutely love it. Because you have that epic um, tunnel scene where you've got like Ogrons and then you've got three Daleks coming out, but the special edition you've got more Daleks in it. I just absolutely love Dev the Daleks. I really think it's a great story. I think it's fantastic and everything else. So yeah, Day of the Daleks. So talking about the next story, which is of course the Curse of Paladon, which was actually broadcast from the 29th of January to the 19th of February 1972. <coughs> so because the Doctor gets his hands on a new demetalization circuit from the Gorillas in the previous story, he managed to pull it in the tires and the tires actually works the very first time. This is the second time John Pope's Doctor manages to get off Earth, really. Because the first one was in the previous season in Claws of Actos. So, even though the Tyrus, he can get the Tyrus working a little bit, but not fully, he ends up going to the planet of Paladon. So, yeah, this is the story. So, this story, we have the return of the Ice Warriors after a three-year rest. And they're not really the villains in this story. They are the good guys, really. So, you kind of have something talking about the Federation. You've got Alpha Centauri. You have King Paladon, played by David Troughton. John Pertwee's sons in this story. We have Alcerius. We also have some other aliens. I can't remember their name. And the Doctor and Joe basically pretend to be Earth's ambassadors. And you have that wicked kind of scene with John Pertwee when they're literally trying to execute the Doctor and the John Pertwee's Doctor just goes, hey, da, da, and he literally fights for his life. I absolutely love the kind of like Minotaur monster as well when John Pertwee's there singing, go, shaboom, 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 like that. And he's like singing to it. And the monster's there going, cool down. I just absolutely love the Curse of Paladon. I cannot find anything fault with it. <coughs> Sorry. I absolutely do enjoy Doctor Who, the Curse of Paladon. I really think it's a great story. I can't find a fault wrong with it. I like the Irish Warriors because this is the first time they ever actually portrayed, and I think it's the only time as well, they are portrayed to be the good guys, not the bad guys that they have been for the two Troughton stories, and of course the monster of Paladon, and even with the... in Cold War and... Empress of Mars, really. They're not in the Empress of Mars, it was us humans that was in the wrong, not them. I really do enjoy the Curse of Paladon, and I absolutely think it's a great way to celebrate its ninth, well, its 50th anniversary in the ninth season. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I do absolutely recommend it. So, of course, now we're coming into the third story of season nine, which is, of course, features the one and only Roger DeGado as the master i absolutely do like this sea devils this is my favorite story of the season this is the best story of the season if you haven't seen doctor who and the sea devils what the hell's wrong with you stop watching this video go and put it on uh, either brit box or go on to brit box and watch doctor who the sea devils because it is a masterpiece story it is Great, it's absolutely epic, and it's not even got a unit in it, it's got the real navy in it. So, yeah, so here we go with Doctor Who the Sea Devils. I actually love the Sea Devils to sign. Now, this story was actually broadcast from the 25th of February to the 1st of April 1972. I absolutely love it because not only do we have the Doctor using this like screwdriver to like try and track down mines in the minefield, and he's actually there activating, you've got the Sea Devils going. Rrr! Like they're running. I really think it's a great story, the Sea Devils. I like the military base where, the, in the way, the Doctors are trying to make contact with the Silorians to like make peace between them and the humans. But it goes terribly wrong until the, the Royal Navy starts attacking their base, and the Doctor and the Master are there talking. And like, and I like the way the Doctor goes, I reverse the reply of the neutron flow. What? And he goes, do you know what you've done, you insane lunatic? Like that, when the master tries does that. I absolutely love that. 
And then, of course, the Master does escape in Finding Stars. Now, the reason the Master is basically in prison in the story is because of his crimes in the Daemons and even in the Terror of the Autons and in the Mind of Evil. So his crimes do get caught up to him. He's arrested by unit in the Daemons and then he gets put into a prison and... During this time in prison, he actually creates a bonacle scheme. He actually makes an alliance with the sea devils, get them to attack the humans and stuff. Yeah, the master's basically trying to manipulate the sea devils. The doctor's there saying, I want you to have peace with the humans. This is the home planet as well. I absolutely do like the sea devils. It's just a great story. I can't find a fault wrong with it. I really can't. So the next story of the season, well, the fourth story of the season, is, of course, The Mutants, which was broadcast from the 8th of April to the 13th of May, 1972. Now, what can I actually tell you about this story? I haven't watched it all the way through. I only watched two episodes. Again, it, the Doctor managed to go off, off world in this story. He goes and does a mission for the Time Lords, but I haven't really finished it because I just got bored after episode two. So I do need to go back and rewatch it. So I most probably rewatch this season after. So then, of course, coming into the final story of the season, known as the Time Monster. Now I know another sci-fi guy who I follow his channel. He's absolutely amazing for Doctor Who content and Star Trek content and other content as well. If you haven't checked out his channel, I do highly recommend him because it is just he is great. He is a great YouTuber. His Doctor Who stuff is absolutely amazing. And I love sitting down and watching his um, collection update of the American DVDs because. I actually prefer the American DVDs to the UK ones, I have to say, because even though we do get sometimes the same artwork, but you doesn't have the kind of classic style. But you do have a great big massive picture of Hartnell, Trout and Pertwee Baker. And I would have loved them instead of these like circle faces that we have. So talking about the Time Monster now, and this, as I said, this story is broadcast from the 20th of May to the 24th of June, 1972. So of course we have the return of the Master, making a Tom Tit um, machine until the Doctor tra tracks down it by you because the Doctor creates a machine that like, can try and track down another TARDIS and he does end up with the masses like I love that scene when you got the Doctor's TARDIS inside the masses and there's the Doctor's there trying to talk to the Master trying to stop him from using Kronos and, the, and he goes you see he is going to find out what but you said he's in yeah of course he's in there but as soon as he steps out of there, he's going to come out like a shot because he doesn't like not to be listened to. I absolutely love the way Roger Degardo plays the Master in this one. And then, when, of course, when they do the tight, the like the time round between the Doctor and the Master's tights, and they're both slamming to each other. And then we've got the Master there, like on the floor, being like a coward, saying, "No, please, Doctor, beg him, I beg you, I beg you." That's it. You can keep his Tardis. We will take him to Earth. He can punish for his crimes. Oh. And then, of course, the master escapes through his and the doctor goes, God, I'll stop, why? You just let him go. I cannot... I absolutely love the way Kronos just says, I cannot interfere in this in this bit. You asked me to You asked me to give him his freedom. And, he, and he's got it. And now you got it as well, Doctor. I absolutely do love the Time Monster. It's a great story. So that's a little bit of information about the stories and stuff. Now, talking about the appearance, the two stories with Roger Degado are absolutely your best. My favourite has got to be the Sea Devils. I just absolutely love the Sea Devils. So, let me know in the comments what you think of Doctor Who Season 9. Do you think it's a good season? Do you like it? Do you love it? And a big happy anniversary to Doctor Who Season 9. With only five stories, 26 episodes. So, let's hopefully we get the Blu-ray pretty soon on Doctor Who The Collection Season 9. So, thank you for watching this video. Please do like, subscribe, and share. And join me for more Doctor Who content. Goodbye.